Hey guys, welcome to another Flutter tutorial. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be talking about the URL launcher and how we can create web views inside of Flutter. Much like Path Provider and Shared Preferences, the URL launcher is a plugin that was developed by the Flutter team. This plugin specifically handles launching URLs. It doesn't necessarily have to launch them into web views, it can launch them into browsers. In iOS, the default behavior is to open all web URLs within the application, whereas in Android, the default behavior is to open into a browser. So we have various different parameters that we can pass to this specific plugin that will allow us to create a web view in both Android and iOS. We'll also be looking at a third party plugin called the Flutter WebView plugin, which will allow us to better interact with the actual WebView layer of our application. All right, so let's get started here. You'll notice that I've already put in some boilerplate. We have our root widget, which is a simple material application, got a theme of dark, and then this points to the home widget, which is a stateful widget. And then our home widget creates state in the home state class. To get the URL launcher plugin, we want to go into our PubSpec YAML and add URL launcher. And at the time of this video, the current version is 3.0.0. So that's the version that I will be using. And then we want to come back into our main.dart file and import the URL launcher package and Dart async. At the top of our file, I just want to define our URL, and I'm going to make this a constant URL. So it's just a constant string. And the URL that I want to go to is steemit.com. Then down in our home state widget, we want to create our build function. We'll put a scaffold in this build function, and we'll make it so that our scaffold has a title. It just says web view. And then the body will be a center with a column inside of it. And the reason we want a column is so that we can just display to the user what the URL is that they're going to go to. And then we'll have a button that they can push that will actually open up the web view. So like so, we'll create a container and I'll give it some padding so it's not just sitting on top of our button. And then I'll just put the URL in a text widget as the child for this container. And we'll create our raised button and I'll put the text on it that says open link. And then we'll create our on pressed function. This on pressed function is the function that we're going to use to actually launch the URL and open up our web view. So let's create an independent function up the top and this will return a future and we'll call it launch URL and we'll pass in a string and we'll call that URL. And of course it needs to be asynchronous because it's going to pass back a future. We can check to see if our applications can launch the URL by using this function that comes with our URL launcher plugin called can launch. And you can see it says checks whether the specified URL can be handled by some app installed on the device. So at this point, we haven't specified that we want this to specifically launch inside of a web view. The device will check all of the browsers and stuff on it and see if this URL is something that can be pursued inside of one of those applications. And then we can call await launch with our URL inside of it. That is if can launch comes back as true. And we have two properties that we can fill out here. One of them is called Force Safari VC, and the other one is called Force Web View. And both of these are Booleans, so we can just put in true or false. If this is set to false, then what will happen is the iOS device will open up the URL inside of its default browser. However, if it's set to true, then the iOS device will try to handle the URL inside of the application. So because we want a Web View, we'll set this one to true. And then, of course, this one's a little bit more self-explanatory, force web view. Obviously, if we set this to true, it will force this to open inside of our app in a web view. Another thing to keep in mind is that this plugin just sort of allows us to access the web view. And if we wanted to give our web view special functionality, we would have to actually go into the Android and the iOS layers and add that functionality. I'll put an else clause in here and I'll just print out can't launch and then we'll pass in the URL. Now we can come back down to our on pressed function and pass in the launched URL with our constant URL. Here's our application. If we click the button, it opens up the web view. 
and you can see this is like the native Android web view, except we didn't have to write all of that code that we wrote before in the Kotlin tutorial. And it just works like any other Android web view would. You can search on the site. We can, you know, change the website if we wanted to. For instance, if I wanted to go to google.com instead, I could reset it and we could go there. And now you can see I can come on to google.com and we can type in whatever we want, say Flutter, and we can go to the Flutter page. Now, if we want to go back, we can hit the back button and this will go back through the history. Apparently there's a redirect, so it won't let me go back further. Now, as I mentioned before, this only allows us to have access to the web view. It doesn't let us set any settings for the web view. So unfortunately, some of the particulars like loading up JavaScript or even cutting out JavaScript are not actually working currently. And I can really showcase this by going to a website like YouTube. And you'll see at the bottom, it'll say, please enable JavaScript on your browser. And that's because we do not have JavaScript enabled in this web view. All right, so with that in mind, there are packages that allow us to directly interface with the Android WebView and with the iOS WebView. The most popular one is the Flutter WebView plugin. So let's take a look at that one now. So I'm just going to comment out all of this other stuff and let's comment out this as well. And now let's jump into our PubSpec YAML and bring in the appropriate plugin. At the time of this video, the Flutter WebView plugin is at version 0.1.4. So that will be the version that I'm using. I've commented out the URL launcher because we're not going to need it. And I've brought in our Flutter WebView plugin library. We just want to bring in package Flutter WebView plugin backslash Flutter WebView plugin dot dart. We're going to approach this in a slightly different way than what we did before. Rather than have a specific home page, we want to have routes. So we'll put our web view on a route that's different from the home page. So when the user clicks the button to open up the web view, it's something that gets opened up inside of our application by changing routes. And so our routes will look like this. The home route will be our home stateful widget, and then we'll have a route called web view which will be our WebView scaffold. And this is a widget that comes with the Flutter WebView plugin. We can specify the URL that we want to start on by putting in the URL property. And like any other scaffold, we can put in an app bar. And there are a bunch of other properties that we can add as well. You can see here we have a Boolean called with JavaScript. We can clear the cache. We can clear the cookies. We can enable an app scheme. We can add a user agent. We can make it the primary view. We can have persistent footer buttons. We can have bottom navigation bar. We can give it zoom and we can give it local storage. I want to activate JavaScript, local storage, and the zoom bar. And so those are the fields that I will put in as true. All right, so now let's come down to our home state widget and let's put in some items. Let's instantiate our web view. So we put it in as a final variable. Final web view equals Flutter web view plugin. And then for this application, I want to add a text editing controller because we want to make it so that the user can change the URL from our home page. We'll add a text editing controller and then when we instantiate it, we can make the text into our URL. We want to override our initial state function because our web view is on a second page. We want to have the web view close. So this will trigger an on destroy event, which will close the web view by default. And then we can open it back up when the user clicks the button. Then let's go up to the top here and let's make this string rather than a constant. We'll just keep it as a string URL. And then we can come down here and in our init state function, we can take our controller, we can add a listener, and we can make it so that the controller will automatically change the URL. So we can just say URL equals controller.text. We also want to override our dispose function and we want to dispose of our web view and our controller. And now let's jump down to our build function and build out our layout. We'll have a center and a column again. And then inside of this column, we'll have a container. We'll give it some padding again. And this one will have our text field that has our controller in it. And then below the container, we can have our raised button, which will open up the web view. So our on pressed will just navigate from our current place, which is our home index to our web view index. 
all we really do is we call navigator of, we pass in our context, and then we want to push in our named path, which is just backslash web view. So it looks like that. And this will make it so that when we push the button, it will automatically slide over and then open our web view. I did make an error. I forgot to change the URL here to our new URL string. And I forgot to change the one inside of our text editing controller to URL as well. With all of that fixed, we now have our input box and we have our button. And if we click our button, you can see it now loads YouTube properly because we have JavaScript enabled. Let's try going to another website. Let's try Google, for instance. You can see we have this Zoom widget as well. And that's from this with Zoom. It allows us to zoom in and out of the web view. So we can zoom in and out and we can change the way the page looks, which is pretty nice. We also have local storage, which means this will store where we go inside of the cache. So like before, I can search out Flutter and then click on the Flutter website and this will bring up our Flutter website. And if I want to go back in the history, I can. And here we are back at google.com. So unlike before where I couldn't get past the redirect, now I can because we have our local storage history. And if I want to go back to the main page, I can just click this button here and this will take us back to the main page with our input box and our button. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you just like this video, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good day.